The calculation of an employee's gross pay is the first step for payroll processing. In this video, we'll talk about how to calculate the gross pay for salaried and hourly employees and discuss commission pay and piece rate work. Let's start first with salaried workers. Salaried workers are employees employed in highly technical qualification-driven positions within a company. And they're classified as being exempt from the Fair Labor Standards regulations. But not everyone can be a salaried worker. As of January 1st, 2024, to be considered an, an exempt employee in the United States, a worker must be paid a minimum salary of $684 per week or $35,568 per year. In California, exempt uh, workers must be paid a salary that is at least twice the state's minimum wage. That means salaried workers must earn at least $66,560 per year. Accountants, lawyers, and executives, those are the type of salaried positions, typically administrative, that are considered salaried positions. There's an exception though. Some salaried workers can be subject to overtime requirements by law. They're called salaried non-exempt workers. To obtain the hourly amount for a salaried worker, we divide the annual salary by the number of hours per year. Here's an example. A salaried non-exempt employee earns $1,000 per week and has a standard 45-hour work week. The reference to the 45-hour work week means that the salaried employee only gets overtime when they work more than the 45 hours per week. And non-exempt means that this employee is subject to overtime. So to calculate uh, the hourly rate on weekly wages for a salaried non-exempt employee, we divide the weekly wages by the number of hours in the salaried employee's standard work week. S some employees may have a 40-hour work week, some have 37.5 hours. This salaried employee has 45 hours. So we divide the $1,000 by 45 and find $22.22 .22 per hour as the hourly rate. Let's look at the second calculation. Uh, in this case, the annual salary is $64,000. So in this case, you would take the annual salary, divide it by the number of weeks per year, 52, and divide it by the standard number of hours per week, in this case, 45 and arrive at $27.35 per hour. In the third calculation, we're calculating what the gross pay would be if the salaried employee who has a standard 45 hour work week, works 50 hours and earns a weekly salary of $1,000. We would first take the base pay of $1,000 per week and uh, for 45 hours and calculate the hourly rate like we did in the first calculation. The hourly rate is $22.22 .22 per hour. And when a salaried non-exempt employee works overtime, they receive an overtime premium, which is 50% more than their regular hourly rate, which means that we multiply $22.22 .22 by 50% and add it to the regular hourly rate, or, or you can multiply the regular rate by 1.5, which gives you the pay for every overtime hour. This employee worked five hours overtime, and to get the overtime pay, we multiply the five hours by 3333, which is the regular rate of 2222 plus the overtime premium for total overtime pay of 16665. We add the overtime pay to the regular pay for total gross wage of $1,166.65. Let's look at another example. In this case, we have an exempt employee who earns $104,000 per year and has a standard work week of 40 hours. Some salaried employees are eligible for overtime, but this employee is not because it tells us that this employee is exempt, meaning exempt from the overtime provisions of the Fair Labor Standards Act. To calculate the hourly rate on an annual salary, we would take the annual salary of $104,000 thousand dollars divided by 52 weeks and divided by 40 hours. Why 40 hours? Well, we were told this employee has a standard 40-hour work week. The result is $50 per hour. 
What would happen if this employee works 60 hours a week or 80 hours per week? What if the employee works 35 hours per week? Well, if the employee works more than the standard hour work week, there is no extra pay. Regardless of how many hours, there is no extra pay. If the employee works less than the 40 hour work week, then there's typically no reduction in pay. Take that as a general rule. There, there are some states that allow employers to reduce the pay if the employee works less than the standard work week. In accounting, it is common to work extra hours during busy season or during month close. It is expected that you work extra hours during that time. However, outside of those times, you have the flexibility to leave early and work less than 40 hours per week. If you find that you're always working lots of extra hours per week, it's perhaps time to hire additional people in your team or figure out how to streamline some of the processes so that the work is reduced. What about hourly workers? How are they different from salaried workers? Well, hourly workers are paid for any hours or fraction of the hours they work and receive overtime for hours worked in excess of 40 hours according to the FLSA. Most people work eight hours, but companies may uh, offer different work shifts and workday length, such as four 10-hour shifts. It can also depend on what kind of company you work for. Sometimes it takes a long time to set up machines in a manufacturing company. If it takes two hours to set up certain machines, you're, you're only getting six hours of actual production out of that shift in terms of full productive hours. So Tom, sometimes it really makes sense to just extend uh, the hours per shift to perhaps 10 hours so that you can get more production out of it. State regulations may require the company with 10 hour shifts to file an election to pay no overtime. The main reason for filing the election should not be the avoidance of overtime pay, but rather the economic benefit of setup times. An employee may also be working more than um, one job classification, especially in small businesses that can happen all the time. So that means that the hourly rate that the employee receives may vary. And here's an example. Evan works as a clerk in the human resources department for a company for which she receives an hourly rate of $15.65. But she also occasionally fills in as a receptionist and then she receives a dollar fifty more. That's called an hour differential. In this example, we're told the dollar amount of the differential, but sometimes it is expressed as a percentage. So this week she worked 35 hours in HR and five hours as a receptionist at the front desk. What is Evans gross pay for, for the week? We would multiply uh, 35 hours by $15.65 for $547.75, and we multiply the five hours by $17.15 because she gets $1.50 more uh, per hour as a receptionist for $85.75. The total gross pay is $633.50. Some employees earn commissions, sometimes on top of their regular salary. Sometimes that's the only pay they receive. Commission always relates to a company's sales revenue, and commission is based on how much somebody sells. In addition, the employee has to be materially involved in the sale of the product, but does not participate in manufacturing the product. Commission-based employees may be exempt, or non-exempt, so, so both can be the case. The employee can be an inside salesperson or an outside salesperson. An inside salesperson means that the customer comes to the business and then the employee must receive at least the minimum wage during a pay period. An outside salesperson is a, is a person who visits the customer's place of business. They're exempt from the FLSA minimum wage provisions. So here in this example, we have Whitney, an outside salesperson. We know that the FL FLSA doesn't apply. The person makes 8% commission on all sales. 
She had $4,650 in sales one pay period. What's her gross pay? And does her employer need to contribute towards her pay to meet the FLSA standards? So that answer is already no, because we learned for outside salesperson, the FLSA does not apply. So here the answer is no. Take the number of sales that the person made times 8%, and that's $372. Not that great of a sales week. But let's look at Byron. Um, he's an inside salesperson. He earns an annual salary of $132,600, plus 5% commission on total sales that he makes during the pay period. So during a biweekly period, he had $92,820 in sales. How much is he getting paid? Well, first of all, we need to calculate his biweekly pay. Uh, based on his annual salary, I come up with $5,100. And then we calculate the commission of $92,820 in sales times 5% and come up with $4,641 for a total pay of $9,741. What about piece rate work? It is one of the oldest pay methods. And under this pay methodology, the employee is paid based on their output. That means the employer receives compensation for units manufactured or actions performed. It could be based on number of units manufactured, but it could also be based on how many cakes you decorate or uh, how many social media posts you generate for a company. It just must be quantifiable output um, for piece rate work. In this case, the employees are non-exempt and are subject to FLSA minimum hourly rates. That is why it's important to compute employees' hourly wage for the period to ensure that they receive at least the minimum wage. So that's important. Let's look at two examples. John and Sarah both work in Nebraska and they actually work together. John is a piece rate worker who receives $15 per completed piece of work and Sarah gets the same amount. During a 40 hour work week, he completes 30 pieces uh, of work. And uh, so his pay would be $450 because 30 times um, 15 is 450. We'll calculate the hourly rate by dividing 450 by 40 hours, and we come up with $11.25. In Nebraska, the rate is $10.50 per hour. So we're okay. He receives enough based on the piece rate pay to be above Nebraska's minimum wage. What about Sarah? She only made 15 pieces, so her pay is only $225. And when we divide the 225 by 40 hours, we arrive at $5.63. In this case, the pay is not enough. Sarah has to make at least $10.50 per hour, which is the minimum wage rate in Nebraska per hour. And so our employer would have to actually pay her more. He would have to, uh, have to pay $420, which is 40 times $10.50 per hour. Let's summarize what we learned. The most common pay types are salaried and hourly. I'm not quite sure how it is in other countries, but certainly here in the US, salaries and hourly are the most common ones. Hourly employees and salaried non-exempt employees receive overtime pay. Employees can receive two different hourly rates for different work. Remember the person that worked in HR and worked as a receptionist? So you can have two different hourly rates. Two additional pay types are commission and piece rate work. Inside salespeople are subject to the FLSA, whereas outside salespeople are not subject to the FLSA.